Quentin Tarantino's ninth film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, drops in theaters this weekend, so let's talk about it. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood tells the story of an aging TV star Rick Dalton and his longtime friend and stuntman Cliff Booth as they struggle to deal with the changes in Hollywood in the year 1969. While that is the setup for the movie, this is a Quentin Tarantino film, so as you can imagine, there's a whole lot more going on here than the setup would imply, especially given that the Manson family ties into things. Before I give you my take on it, go ahead and share what you thought down below in the comment section. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? With that said, let's get started talking about the good. And I'll kick things off by saying that this movie transports you back to Hollywood in 1969. The production design, the costumes, the aesthetics are all absolutely perfect, but more so than that, the nature of the story, we go around with them from movie sets to their homes, to meetings, to parties. We get in their cars with them, drive down the streets of Hollywood, which Quentin Tarantino has perfectly transformed to what they looked like back in the 1960s, and it fluidly transitions from one character to the next, from one location to the next, throughout the city, throughout a day, so you really feel like you get an understanding of this weird world that was Hollywood in the year 1969 at least for an aging TV star. Next thing you gotta talk about are the fantastic performances and characters. In the lead is Leonardo DiCaprio's Rick Dalton, this aging TV star whose career is starting to dwindle. He's very insecure because of this. He's incredibly self-involved, but he's not entirely selfish, and because of that, he can still be very endearing, and you're still rooting for him throughout the story because you like him. And this is a performance that only a world-class actor can give, as DiCaprio has to play Rick Dalton, the person who's struggling with his career, has friends, can stutter a little bit, and have self-confidence issues in conversations. And then he's also Rick Dalton, the movie star who has to give performances inside of scenes. So DiCaprio has to act as Rick Dalton, acting poorly in a scene. Then he has to beat himself up as Rick Dalton, who knows he's acting poorly, and then later can give a great performance as Rick Dalton. That is an incredibly complex performance for an actor to give, and DiCaprio absolutely nails it. Then, of course, you gotta talk about Brad Pitt's Cliff Booth. This is the coolest character in the movie. He's the funniest character in the movie, and this is one of Brad Pitt's coolest performances in general. Whereas Leonardo DiCaprio's Rick Dalton is entirely self-serious about the world of Hollywood, Cliff is amused by it. So he kind of gives the audience's perspective on all kind of the shenanigans that are taking place. He gets all the funniest lines as he kind of comments on all of it, but he's not a cynical character. He's not making fun of Hollywood. He loves Rick Dalton. He enjoys his life there. He's just aware of how self-serious Hollywood can be, and that makes for a fun character inside of this film. And as great as their individual performances are, they're even better together as the movie's largely about the friendship between the two of them. A lot of scenes are just the two of them riding in a car, watching a TV show together, having a dinner meeting together, and just talking and having conversations, and you're enjoying the relationship between the two of them. And because of this, I think that these are some of Quentin Tarantino's more likable lead characters. Next up, this might be Quentin Tarantino's most tightly constructed story. Now, this is not a narrative-driven movie. I'll talk about that more later on. But throughout the entire film, it keeps setting up the pieces, building up towards a third act where everything that we saw before suddenly makes a lot more sense. Throughout the whole movie, we're introduced to characters, props, ideas. They all make sense in and of themselves, but then they come together very powerfully in the final 20 minutes of the movie. Like, things will feel like just a throwaway joke earlier in the movie, and then they're really important in the end. As an example, and I won't go into any specifics, early in the movie, there's a scene of dialogue between Rick Dalton and a producer about his career and what they're doing with him on television that absolutely works in and of itself to establish his character inside of the movie. Later on, there's a scene about Cliff and about his backstory, why his career's where it's at, and it absolutely establishes his character inside of the movie. But as you move into the finale, you realize that they were setting the finale up with that one-two punch of these two scenes that are totally different from each other, but absolutely build on each other to build to a satisfying conclusion in the third act. Speaking of that third act, I went into this movie having heard a lot of people had mixed reactions to the third act of this film. I absolutely loved it. I felt that the first two acts set up all the pieces, all the character arcs, 
perfectly for a satisfying conclusion that put an enormous grin on my face and my theater was just going nuts throughout the entire last 20 minutes of this film. One final positive on this film, it's probably Quentin Tarantino's funniest film. The movie functions largely as a dramedy. It's all about the characters, their arcs, but it's really funny all along the way. From there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. These aren't necessarily good or bad things, just things to know going into the film. First off, this isn't a story-driven movie. There's not like a clear conflict or enemy that we're trying to overcome. It's very much a character-driven, dialogue-driven, relationship-driven film. So some people love that they're just sitting there spending a lot of time with these great Tarantino characters and the great Tarantino dialogue. Other people will be frustrated wondering like, where is this going? And when are we gonna get there? And why are we taking so long to get there? The second thing, this movie is jam packed with cameos and a lot of those cameos are in the trailers. So the inherent nature of the movie is these characters kind of going around Hollywood, interacting with different people at different places and at different times. And a lot of those different sequences are kind of teased in the trailer. And by the nature of that, you might see some of these characters and be like, I wanna see more of that. I'm excited to see the full sequence there. In some of these instances, basically the whole sequence is in the trailer. There's not a whole lot more beyond what was teased in the trailer. So if you go in expecting all of these characters to have a big part in the film, that's not really what it's like. Some of them are, and others are only teased. You saw it in the trailer, that's about all there is. So you need to go in with proper expectations. From there, let's move on to the bad. Like many Quentin Tarantino films, it's very long and the middle act here feels pretty bloated. Since the film is kind of Quentin Tarantino's celebration of 1960s Hollywood, he wants to include a little bit of everything. His recreations of commercials, TV shows, movies, sequences, actors, locations. And like I mentioned before, it's not a story-driven film, so it can feel like at times it's just Quentin Tarantino trying to show us all of his favorite things. They're all fun, they're all well done, but when they're all just kind of stacked on top of each other, they don't necessarily add anything to the movie or progress anything forward. It's it's just one more thing that Quentin Tarantino wanted to show us. And because of that, the middle act definitely feels like it's meandering quite a bit, especially with the stuff about Margot Robbie. We see a day in her life, but there's not a specific character arc there, and it's not necessarily building on the narrative. We're just experiencing Hollywood with her. Also, when the movie transitions from the second to the third act, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you see the film. There's a dramatic shift in the storytelling style and pacing for about 10 minutes. Minutes, it shifts to a lot of voiceover and montaging, and then it goes back to normal. Quentin Tarantino's known for kind of having some out of the box storytelling techniques that he uses, but here it lingers on the shift for so long that it draws way too much attention to the storytelling itself. Real quick before I give you my take on the movie, remember to share your thoughts down below in the comments section. Also, I will be dropping my ranking of all of the Quentin Tarantino movies this Saturday. If you're watching this in the future, you can check it out in this playlist up above. While it's not quite another Tarantino masterpiece, it is a compelling look at Hollywood in 1969 with some fantastic performances and a finale that absolutely paid off for me. It's an A- minus overall, it's a 9 out of 10 on the entertainment scale, and film lovers must go see this film. Remember to come back Saturday for my ranking of all of the Quentin Tarantino movies. If you want more content from me right now, check out that video right over there with my ranking of the films of several great directors. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.